This is Morgan coming at you with a short video to go over what's happening with this here fat bike, electric bike. So I'm gonna uh, switch the video around. So we're gonna go over what this bike is. The platform for the bike is a Moto Pekin Night Train. And uh, it's a great bike for the price. Really like the bike. Entry level pricing, but mid level components. And uh, it's a 2 by 11 system, so it has plenty of gears. And it came with decent tires, but I did put the Snowshoe XL tires, a little bit fatter. Um, and these are also studdable tires, so at some point I'm going to experiment with studding those. You can see the little uh, pocket in there for studs, so it's pretty awesome. So that's the platform on which I installed the motor kit, or had the guys at Gravity Sports in McCall uh, install that. They did an awesome job. So here is the front wheel, the all axle hub motor by Grin Technologies. If you look closely in there, you can see there's an adapter plate that fits the motor. The motor is quite narrow uh, compared to the wide axle of this through axle system here, but uh, it's it works pretty well. Uh, well, I'm not gonna try to undo that right now, but that is a through axle. A standard, I think it's 15 millimeters if I remember right, through axle that goes through to the other side. And that's all covered with snow. <laughs> but there is a nice, uh, if I can get it, there is a torque arm that the folks at Grin manufactured that bolts right onto the fork here. And this prevents the motor axle from spinning out when you apply torque. And then the wiring comes down and connects underneath this neoprene sleeve that just hides it and cleans it up a little bit and, and uh, keeps the elements out just a little bit. So that's the all axle hub motor. It is a direct drive motor, which means it's very silent and you can use regenerative braking. The only real downside of a direct drive motor like this one compared to another one, a geared drive like the Easy is that this one has a little bit of what's called cogging torque, which just means when it's spinning, it has just a very faint resistance. Not too much, but there is a slight noticeable resistance to it. And so if you're planning on riding a bike a lot with just leg power alone, then you might want to consider an internally geared motor for your application. Um, but for this application, I'm planning on using the motor at least a little bit most of the time. So it's a pretty awesome new thing. This is the only motor I'm aware of that actually works with axles like this. And for a direct drive motor that can do regenerative braking and that's pretty efficient, um, it is thin and light and low profile, which is awesome. Grin, it's in beta test right now, and they say that the one downside is with the lower thermal mass, meaning it just weighs less and it can't distribute heat as much, that it has more chance of overheating. Um, I've, uh, that can be easily avoided. There is a temperature sensor in it which can connect to the computer we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, for winter use, I'm really not worried about that. <laughs> it's plenty cold around here. So I think overheating problems are quite unlikely. And so the wiring comes up and goes through this bundle and they did a pretty clean install job as much as they could with all the extra wire. And this is what's called the motor controller. This is a Grinfinion sine wave 25 amp motor controller. The sine wave means that it's uh, much smoother than the typical trapezoidal shaped uh, motor controller. That just refers to the shape of the electrical pulses that it sends to the motor. Because what this has to do is this has to turn the DC direct current uh, from the battery into an alternating current which goes into the motor and so it does that in pulses. So sine wave is just much smoother. Uh, so it's pretty awesome, nice little controller and the controller is then connected to the computer, the cycle analyst. Here let me turn it on. So woohoo, the cycle analyst. So the cycle analyst has many functions, one of which is to track your mileage, distance, the amount of power used so far, the amount of power left, and things like that. You can see the cool little battery gauge in the left, which I found is pretty accurate, but even more accurate is to measure the total amp hours used here. So if you know the amp hour, 
how much your pack can take in terms of total amp hours, then you know exactly how much you've used and how much you have left. So that's pretty awesome. So there are a whole bunch of different screens with many, many different metrics and features, including if you have um, the right kind of sensor installed in your bottom bracket, you can actually have it measure your actual human watts. So you can measure how much watts your legs are putting in versus how many watts the motor is putting in. So you know how much you're using assist and how much you're using human power. Now on this bike, I don't have the torque sensing bottom bracket that's required for that. But anyway, it's really cool to have that. Um, I may install one of those someday. But it has lots of other features, including it allows you to set up a cruise control. It allows you to decide what kind of uh, throttle power happens, whether you want the throttle power to decide based on speed. Um, so you can have your throttle set a certain speed or set a certain power level or various other settings. So cruise control, pedal assist. So if you want, I'm going, I'm in the process of installing a pedal assist sensor, which will consist of adapting a magnet ring. This is a pretty large spindle here. So we have to do a special adaptation of an existing one that's meant for smaller. And so it has 12 magnets. And when I spin the pedals, it will detect it in this sensor and that'll go into the cycle analyst and the cycle analyst will activate the throttle based upon the amount that I'm pedaling. And then there's this auxiliary input uh, control, which also goes into the cycle analyst and it's just a knob here. And this will allow me to adjust how much power I want the pedal assist to use. So when I have it turned all the way up, then when I pedal just a little bit, I'll go to very high power. And when I have it turned down, when I pedal a little bit, it'll be very low power. And then once that's set up with the pedal assist, then whenever I'm pedaling, it'll just sit there and kick in a certain amount of power. And then if I want an extra boost, I can use the throttle. So let's see what happens when I... That's what it looks like with the throttle activated. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> show both at the same time. And on the other side of the throttle, this is a special throttle that has, let's see if I can get that. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It's under there. A green button. So that green button is called the brake button. And all that does is that cuts the power to the wheel, especially if you're in cruise control mode, you have to have a way to cut the power. But the other cool thing is if you're going downhill, you can hit that brake mode and then it uses regenerative braking in this wheel. So you'll actually get power being put back into the battery from the wheel at that time. So it's pretty awesome to be able to regen brake using this. So then let's move over to the battery. The battery pack is mounted to a Surly rack. So this is the Surly fat bike rack that we're doing. And the Surly fat bike rack is designed for um, fat bikes like this one. And it has a mount that mounts onto a plate underneath. So what I can do is this key switch actually turns it on and off, but if you, if you notice right now, it's like locked on. So how do we unlock it? Well, we just turn the key all the way and then it just comes right off like that. And there's a little plate right there that's made manufactured by Green Technologies with three little mounting things that mount to the crossbars of the rack. And so it mounts securely on there and the battery locks onto that. It fits right in, locks on, and boom. Now it's locked in. <laughs> Pretty cool system. So this battery itself is an easy lithium manganese, manganese battery, flat pack. And it's got a cover on it right now, the rain cover, which I just used to insulate it a little bit. And it is... Um, and so it's pretty awesome with that setup for winter biking. I've also got a connector here that allows me to connect two batteries into one. You have to have a special diode unit to do that. Otherwise you risk um, problems if the batteries aren't at a approximately equal charge. So allows connecting two batteries in, which this thing consumes a lot of power in the winter time, plowing through the snow with these big tires. So I've been experimenting with a second battery in a pannier that's mounted on the side here. So that's pretty awesome as well. So this battery 
uh, will get me about 10 to 15 miles on its own when it's snowy and slushy. Um, if it's dry conditions, it gets me further than that. But that's enough for me to get into town and back from this awesome location. So that's really good. And so this is a lithium manganese battery. And it's they're designed for 300, 400 cycles. But if you use Grin's special charger, you may get more out of it. I've um, got the special charger from them. It's called the the cycle satiator and it allows for only partial charge instead of charging the battery all the way up you can charge it to 85 percent and increase potentially increase the lifespan of the thing so anyway that's an overview of the main components battery on the rack controller with my little frame bag which is where i put my spare tire and, and tools and motor cycle analyst oh i forgot the outdoor technology speaker that i have on here it's just a little bluetooth rechargeable speaker that's meant for cycling and it's water resistant so that thing's pretty awesome it's nice to have tunes when you're out rocking on the bike and this thing is fun 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 so i've really enjoyed it and if you want more details about the build and what went into it check out the blog post at cycle9.com and meanwhile, enjoy yourself out there.